Hey there, retro gaming fans. Welcome back to Batocera TV, your favorite spot for retro gaming and emulation goodness. In this episode, we're doing a starter guide to help you get up and running with Visual Pinball on Batocera. If you've always wanted to try Virtual Pinball but didn't know where to start, this video is for you. We'll go over the basics. What Visual Pinball Standalone is, where to download tables, how to install them in Bato Serra, and which files are needed to make everything work. This isn't a full PinCab setup tutorial, just what you need to start flipping right away on your Bato Serra system. Let's dive in. So, what exactly is Visual Pinball Standalone? It's an open-source, cross-platform pinball simulator designed specifically to run on systems outside of Windows. This version is a sub-project of the original V Pinball X, reworked to be compatible with Linux and other platforms. The legacy Visual Pinball was created over 20 years ago using Microsoft tech like DirectX and VB Script, stuff that simply doesn't work on Linux. That's why, for a long time, Visual Pinball couldn't be integrated into Batocera. But thanks to this amazing cross-platform initiative, we now have a fully functional version that runs natively inside Batocera. And the best part? You still get that classic Visual Pinball experience with hundreds of incredible tables to play. That said, not everything is perfectly plug and play. Visual Pinball tables are written using VBS scripts, and even though VPX Standalone runs these using a Visual Basic script engine through Wine, some tables may not work right out of the box on Batocera. Fortunately, in this very video, I'll show you where to find fixed scripts and how to make sure your tables work correctly. But we'll get to that a bit later. First, let's find some tables. Before we go any further, there's something important to understand. There are different types of pinball tables out there. First, you've got Recreations. These are digital versions of real-life machines, like the ones made by Stern, Williams, Data East, or Bally. The goal is to reproduce the original table as accurately as possible, including layout, physics, and sounds. These Recreations usually require the original ROMs file of the machine, which is still protected by copyright. Then you have what's called Original Tables. These are brand new creations, imagined and built entirely by the community. Most original tables don't require a ROMs to work since they're not emulating a real machine. But sometimes, even an original table will use a ROMs for the emulation part. That would make it more of a hybrid table. Okay, now that you know the types of tables, let's go grab some. And for that, there's really one place I recommend above all others. The Virtual Pinball Spreadsheet. You'll find the link right down below in the video description. This amazing site collects and organizes almost every table available from the main pinball forums and communities. It's regularly updated, and it lets you search, filter by category, and access all the extra content for each table, like the back glass, media packs, rule sheets, and more. It's the number one place you should check when you're looking for a new table to download. Just click the link, and it will redirect you to the proper site to grab the table and all its assets. Now let's see how to install tables in Batocera. All your pinball content goes into the vPinball folder inside your ROMs directory. It's highly recommended, almost essential, to create a separate folder for each table. That way, you can keep everything clean and organized. Your table file, the script, media, backlash, everything in one place. Just copy your .vpx file into that folder and it will be picked up by Emulation Station ready to be launched with Visual Pinball. Sounds simple, right? Well, if it were that easy, I probably wouldn't be making this video. Remember, there are two types of tables, original creations and recreations of real-life machines. And it's with the recreations that things get a little tricky. These tables usually require the original ROMs file of the machine in order to run. That ROMs is loaded and interpreted by PinMame, which is embedded inside Visual Pinball Standalone. To know which ROMs you need, check the download page of the table. It almost always tells you the exact ROMs file name required. As for where to find these ROMs, well, I can't give you direct links here for legal reasons, but if you search for PinMame ROMs on Archive website, you'll most likely find what you're looking for pretty quickly. 
Okay, now that you've got the ROM file, here's what you need to do. Inside your tables folder, create a new folder called ROMs, just like that. Then simply paste the ROMs file you just downloaded into that ROMs folder. And voila, you've got everything you need to get started. The .vpx table, the ROMs, and a clean structure that makes it easy to manage later. That's the core setup for most recreations. From here, you can already start playing many tables on Batocera. Let's take your table to the next level with some extra content. Things like a dedicated backlass, enhanced sound, or even a colored DMD. All of that can be found directly from the spreadsheet site I mentioned earlier. To use them, it's simple. Place the backlass file named exactly like your table in the same folder as the .vpx. If there's an INI file, drop it there too. For music or sound upgrades, create a music or alt sound folder inside your table folder and drop the files there. Now let's take things one step further to make your setup even cleaner and more portable. It's time to enable the per table folder option. This setting allows you to keep everything related to a specific table, the ROM, scripts, media, backlash, inside that table's folder. In other words, your table becomes self-contained and easy to manage. Perfect for keeping things tidy or even for backing up your setup later. To activate this, just open the visual pinball system settings from within Batocera. Then scroll down and enable the option per table folder. Once that's done, visual pinball will automatically look inside the table's folder for all required files rather than relying on shared global folders. Like I said earlier, most tables are still developed for Windows, and even though the Visual Pinball team recommends writing clean cross-platform code, it's not uncommon to find tables that just don't work on Visual Pinball standalone. Usually, that means the table crashes right after launch and sends you back to Emulation Station. But don't panic. The first thing to do is check if a fixed script already exists for that table. Head over to the VPX standalone script site. Links in the description. There you can see if someone already made a patched version of the script for your table. Just make sure the file name matches exactly with your .vpx table. Otherwise, it won't work. Download the corrected .vbs file and place it next to your table in the same folder. Again, it must have the same name as the table or it won't be recognized. If it doesn't match, you probably got the wrong file or the wrong version. And there you go. You now have everything you need to get started with Visual Pinball on Bato Serra. We've seen how to find and install tables, the difference between originals and recreations, how to add ROMs, and even how to fix a crashing table with the right script. That's the foundation, and with just that, you can already enjoy a huge collection of pinball tables. In the next video, we'll go a bit deeper. We'll cover backlash setup, DMD configuration, and how to use PUP packs for an even more immersive experience. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you won't miss the next episode of Batocera TV. Until then, keep flipping and see you soon.